Hey guys, welcome back to Auto Repair guys. Thank you guys for watching and subscribing to the channel. In today's video guys, we'll be working here on a Mazda 2.3 turbo engine guys. The one that's used in CX-7 and Mazda Speed 3. We'll show you guys the complete guide for timing chain removal and replacement guys. Stay with us. We'll show you how to do that. We'll have more than 200 videos guys on this car and every vehicle we get at the shop because our mission guys is to save you as much money as we can. So please guys, subscribe to the channel, like the video and drop a comment below. Let us know if the video was helpful. So let's go ahead, start on it. It will take quite a bit of work, I promise to you, but it's well worth it because as you know, this is the weak spot on this engine. If you don't replace your timing chain, okay, you're risking buying new engine and if you don't believe me, check out how expensive the engine for this car is. Just due to that reason, guys, because people do not replace the timing chain. They think it's a lifetime deal and they end up needing a new new engine because uh, when that uh, chain jumps, what happens? You're going to hit the piston and the valves and you're done, guys. So let's start on it now. So all the tools and parts guys that we use in the video, they will be shared in the description of the video below. Stay with us, guys. You'll see quite a bit of work will be uh, we'll be involved in this engine today So we have guys, okay, we're to the right side the right wheel is removed and once you remove the right wheel We have that cover that has four clips one two three four that you need to remove guys Once you do that you get to the crankshaft pulley uh, and you have the crankshaft position sensor stay with us guys We're going to go ahead and remove it get to that point and we'll explain what else needs to be done so we will need to, br uh, to remove the serpentine belt guys, after that, uh, that crankshaft pulley, it's not a key pulley, you have to stay with us, we'll explain uh, what needs to be done, because if you just remove it and put it together, your timing will be off, the crankshaft position sensor will read, uh, will read the wrong input and the car will not start. So we need to bring the uh, engine to top dead center, stay with us, and that's what we'll be doing, and we'll explain what needs to be done. So in order to remove guys the engine mount, what do you have to do? Okay, you have to get a jack. Okay, I recommend to get a jack stand to you. Wood block, uh, that's a must guys. If you don't use a wood block, you'll punch a hole in your uh, oil pan. Support the engine on the bottom. Okay, and you want to pump it a little bit. Okay, because you will have some pressure from the engine. Okay, on the engine mount. So just pump probably about half an inch, an inch. You will need to start removing the bolts. This is a ground wire there. And it's very important guys. Okay, once you start removing towards the last bolts to check if the engine starts dropping or if it's too much up, so you need to adjust your jack. So you have to be extremely careful. Okay, this uh, ground wire is out. Now we have 17 millimeter socket. Okay, those nuts, once we get the second one loose, you have to be extremely careful, guys. Okay, this one is super tight. Okay, came loose. Now let me come on this side to show you what's happening because from there almost impossible guys. The three bolts on the bottom, get those loose. Perfect, now we'll get a little impact, so we'll see if we can remove those. Okay, one bolt is out. Perfect. Second bolt here. Third bolt over there. Now the two nuts guys, after you remove the first one, you have to be extremely careful and slowly remove the second one and readjust the engine until there is no pressure on the mount. Okay, slowly now. Okay, ours. You can see guys. 
engine's good, it didn't drop, and the mount guys came out of the way. Okay, you can see just like that. This is the mount. If your boat comes loose, you need to retighten this one later. So don't forget to do that. Ours came loose and then it came loose at the same time. You can use reverse torque socket to get those studs tight. And this is guys the engine mount. So now guys, <clears throat> we need to release the belt. How we do that? Okay, with 14 millimeter socket guys. Okay, we're going to go on the tensioner pulley. Go clockwise. Okay, we'll need to lift up actually. Okay, like that. And when we do guys, you can pull it out of this pulley. Okay, and your belt will come out. Perfect, just like that. So, as you can see guys, we removed the water pump, but you don't have to remove it. We just made a video how to do it. Now, uh, we have uh, one, okay, one pulley there. Okay, that's uh, idle pulley that we need to remove with a 10 millimeter, guys. Okay, and I think this one is quite tight, actually. So once you get that loose, okay, you'll come off. Okay, you can see guys, like that, and this pulley came, came out of the way, guys. So for the timing, guys, in order to set the timing, we will need to use that plate. That plate goes on the camshafts, okay, like this one. And we will need to remove the high pressure fuel pump housing here, so that will need to be removed. We'll remove the hole so we can access uh, the bolts from the side. So we need to remove that intake holes and uh, quite a bit of space will open so we can get to it. Okay, this one is stuck really, really bad. Okay, perfect. Now this is the intake boot guys and you can see this is, uh, okay, uh, this right here is what we need to remove and we need to remove two bolts so we can get to there. So there is quite a bit of disassembly involved and you will see that yourself. One of the bolts, okay, okay let's see exactly which one it is now. Okay right here now. Okay, we have one more bolt that we need to remove. This is for that bracket here. Okay, we need to get a different socket because this one is too deep. So we'll get a 10 millimeter that's a little bit shorter for there. Okay, perfect. And we can reach because these bolts are actually very shallow, guys. So we have to be careful not to uh, round the head of the bolt. Okay, we just dropped our socket. You have to be extremely careful not to drop it in the intake boot, in the intake holes, because you have to remove it and get it out of there. Otherwise, guys, okay, you can, uh, if you forget about it, it's going to go in the engine later. And you will bend the valve. Who knows, you can even throw the whole engine out of the car because of a simple mistake like that. Okay, you can see this one now came out. So 8mm socket, we're going to remove a few bolts here that hold that plate. Okay, looks like there is one right here as well.
Okay, perfect guys, all that came out. Now we can just go ahead and remove the housing. Okay, right here from the uh, camshaft. Okay, the intake camshaft. And we can proceed. So those are with 10 millimeter now. Okay, one's loose. Second one now. Perfect. Then we have two more. Pretty long boat. Okay, this is the third bolt. Now we just have uh, one more. Okay, right there. Okay, so let me see from here if we'll be able to get to it. No, because we have that coolant line there, so we'll see if that will need to be removed. Oh, we will need to just use a offset box wrench. Okay, like this one might do it, guys. Okay, the one right here. If we get a 10. Okay, let's see which is a 10. This one is 10. Millimeter on this side. And... Alright okay, guys, and that housing, the whole housing will come out. Okay, this is the high pressure fuel pump housing here guys. We have some oil, this is the tappet, okay right here guys. That uh, is another weak spot on those that needs to be replaced once in a while. Otherwise they get wore out. And this tappet usually stays okay right here on this side. So before we guys remove the harmonic balancer, okay, and we start taking things apart, we need to bring the engine to top dead center. Now that harmonic balancer later will need to be, this is the crankshaft pulley aligned and all that stuff. We you guys have the video on the channel, at top, top dead center this hole needs to align with this one and you have to put a bolt through it when you're getting it tight and there is a special tool that you need to use. So this is the top dead center pin, okay, that we'll be using. So. That's the thing that we need now, uh, so we can bring that engine to top that center. So guys, we need 8 millimeter socket. Okay, this is the crankshaft position sensor right there. Okay, one bolt is out. Now we just have one more on top. Perfect, the sensor comes out. Now we need to disconnect the wire. I show you how to do it guys on the other engine. This one had an extreme oil leak and as a result guys everything is covered guys in oil here. So I'll come towards the back. Okay. Now we should be able to pull it out. Okay it is stuck a little bit. Okay but it comes out. And this is guys your crankshaft position sensor. So now right here on the back side of the engine to towards the, uh, you can see towards that uh, CV axle there is one bolt guys, okay, that we need to remove. Okay, let me show you now on the engine that we have removed right here, wow. 
we're removing that bolt okay where exactly that thing is this is the spare engine guys looking at the engine block okay this is your cv axle here on the back side right there this is the engine block bolt that we need to remove and this is for top dead center this bolt right there guys okay you can definitely see it so we will remove that bolt now okay that's what we're doing we'll just remove it by hand and later okay we're going to go ahead and install this one now you will need to remove your crankshaft position sensor it actually goes the other way okay that is guys it has only two bolts we forgot to mention that uh, two bolts that you need to remove and disconnect the wire so once you remove that sensor okay you need to go ahead and remove the bolt so we just get it loose now and later we're going to install that uh, top dead center pin what this pin does you screw it in the engine in this hole and when you turn the engine to hit top dead center it's going to contact the pin guys okay and this one will be top dead center so now we need to screw that one in All the tools and parts that we use guys in our videos will be listed in the description of the video below. So please guys, check it out. Quite a few videos will be there. On our channel and each one of them we try to share all the tools and parts that we use. So make it more convenient for you if you need to replace something. Okay, we got this one tight. It's tight all the way in. We didn't even need to use a wrench. You gotta make sure that it's all all the way in and when we get now a 21 millimeter socket or 13 16 standard socket works as well uh, we're going to turn it until we contact that top dead center pin that's it right there we cannot go more this is top dead center let's remove that thing just to show you quick okay check out how the crankshaft pulley aligns okay the holes are lined there so this is top dead center all the way now on top guys at top dead center you're going to have your camshafts okay those things here horizontal okay horizontal to the to the point that we can actually install okay that plate on the camshaft okay it will go on the camshaft uh, you might need to move them just uh, an in like a uh, hair back and forth a little bit until it gets in because uh, it could be just okay okay just a little bit okay this one is almost going in so yeah but this one oh we went we went too much okay let's go forward a little bit oh almost right there and I missed it it just such a tight fit okay that locking plate okay let's go back 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 a little bit more okay perfect I went in on this camshaft okay and here on this one okay we need to go back just a hair okay to make sure that it's everything aligned okay just need to align it a little bit more okay guys and perfect this is it you can see it went in so this is guys top dead center you need to install that pin okay and you know that the engine is the top dead center uh, now if you guys not putting timing chains or anything like that but you need to bring it to top dead center to check timing to check uh, something else uh, you will know how to do it you don't even have to remove the valve cover all you have to do just use that pin guys and you can check the top dead center on the engine like that so now we will need to remove the crankshaft pulley. We will be using guys the, this Dewalt air compressor. Check it out guys. It's on our uh, uh, list in the description of the video below. It's really good guys. Very little compressor. Only 6 gallons. But it goes all the way to 165. So you can see 165. And we have it now set at 165. Uh, the pressure regulator. And we will be using the impact here with a 21 millimeter socket. Or 1316 does the trick as well. It fits really really good. And uh, we're going to go ahead guys and just at, once the engine is a TDC just go ahead and remove that one okay came out with ease sometimes they'll be stuck so you might need to hammer them with the uh, with impact 
a few times, wait for the compressor to load and go again. Now this is not a key pulley, so you can see guys, it's very important how we install that later because otherwise your, uh, okay, your car will not fire because it, uh, the crankshaft position sensor is reading off of that pulley and as a result guys, your timing will be completely off. So for the timing cover, we already removed four bolts guys. Okay, right here we have four bolts that we need to remove. We already removed ours. After that guys, we need to start taking more things apart. Okay, there are a few more bolts. I'll try to attempt to, okay, video those from the top because it will be a little bit uh, more obvious maybe. Okay, you can see this is the timing cover and that's what we'll be working on. We have quite a few bolts. Once we remove it guys, I'll explain where exactly all the bolts are because it's practically impossible to stick the camera down there. So 13 millimeter socket now guys, we're going to remove a few big bolts on the valve cover here. Okay, and some of those guys, they, they tend to be extremely, extremely tight, so... Okay, we're going to get the bigger tools, so that way we can break them loose with a breaker bar, because... Everything on that engine, okay, seems to be super, super tight, so we'll get the big breaker bar. Hopefully that will help a little bit. This one was overheated, that's why we're replacing it with this low mile engine that we got here. Sometimes overheating the engine will cause the bolts to get extra tight, I've noticed that. Okay, so three bolts with 13 millimeter where the engine mount is, kind of thing. Okay, and then we have one more towards the bottom there with the same 13 millimeter. Okay, definitely this one got loose as well. Now, for the most part, I think we have only eight millimeters. We'll go, go ahead and remove the big ones first now. Show you where they are, how long they are and all that stuff. If you guys want to see any specific video, don't hesitate to drop a comment below. We'll try our best to make a video for your problem. Okay, removing one of them. Check out how long that ball is. The one with the 13 millimeter head now. Working on the second one here. We might need to, we'll see if we need to jack the engine up a little bit with the, uh, with the jack so we can bring it up. Perfect, second one, they have silicone from the valve cover, uh, from the timing cover, excuse me. Who guys have the video of how to replace head gasket, torque specs, all that stuff, valve clearance. Okay, removing the one towards the bottom there. Trying to get a little bit of light in there, perfect. So these four bolts, okay, we removed them. The bottom one is shorter than the other three ones. Now we're going to get eight millimeter socket and we have a few bolts that we need to start removing on the cover. Those usually are not too, too tight. Sometimes they will tend to be a little bit tight, but Careful not to over tighten those later, we'll have the torque specs because if you over tighten them what will happen actually uh, 
you will guys break them and you can develop an oil leak from that point and then we have all, all of those on the back side of the engine Okay, you can see guys, they slowly start coming off. So we'll go ahead, start removing them now once we get them loose and uh, we'll see guys what else we need to do. Stay with us until the end. I'll show you where all the bolts are once we remove the timing cover and you can see everything a little bit better. Once you get them loose, they'll go by hand. We'll go ahead, get them loose and we'll continue. So a few more, more bolts that we need to remove. Uh, we'll see for sure if those are holding there. Okay, and this one here is just a little bit dirty. Okay. So let's see if it's going to come off. Okay, it's in good now. No, it's a little bit tight. Let's come on top for that one. So let's see now guys, so we're going to attempt to remove the timing cover and see if we're missing something. You have to be extremely careful because that thing does break easy, believe me. If you have a ball that you forgot or you pry too much, that thing will break easy. Okay, ours came out pretty easy, you can see just like that. So. Let me guys explain to you now, okay, where all the bolts are. Okay, we're going to flip it. Let's flip it side uh, the other way so I can explain to you where all the bolts are and you, you expect guys what to do. Okay, so this bolt, you don't have to remove it. Now, these three are the big ones. You have one big one here with the 13 millimeter. Then you have one, two, three, four, five. Okay, this one will be six. This is for the crankshaft position sensor. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 little bolts that we removed. And you have those two in the middle. And this one doesn't need to be removed, guys. Okay, you can see. And we got the timing cover out of the way now. So before we continue now, guys, we're going to install the crankshaft pulley. Okay, and just get it tied with a little impact here. That way, guys, okay, uh, we'll be able to hold, okay, we'll be able to hold the uh, oil pump sprocket so we can get it loose okay and by getting it loose guys okay we need to lubricate a little bit uh, we'll be able to get the chain out later from the oil pump because otherwise we won't be able to remove the oil chain oil pump chain okay this is super super tight fit okay perfect went in So we're just going to get it tied with a little impact here. Okay, perfect. Now, <clears throat> we're going to hold, guys. Okay, we're going to hold here uh, the crankshaft and we're going to remove with the 10 millimeter, okay. With the 10 millimeter, we can hold the crankshaft with the wrench now. Or uh, I'll try to hold it by hand and remove that 10 millimeter bolt. Even though the timing chain will hold it, but just be careful, guys. Okay, that chain is very tight, so we're going to go ahead. Uh, we're going to get the ratchet, actually. And we're going to remove it uh, by hand, because a little impact cannot remove it. We have the torque specs on the channel later, guys. We're going to post all that. So, let's go ahead, get it loose now. And pretty tight. So we'll get the bigger tools, guys. Because don't want to smash a finger or something here. Okay, 
Okay, he did get loose. But you can see how much effort that thing took. Now we're going to bring the engine again. Okay, we need to just turn the crankshaft a little bit until we hit the pin in the TDC point. Okay, so let's do that before we remove the bolt. Okay, to make sure that it's again at top dead center. Because there was some slack in the chain. Okay, that's it. Right there that we took. So now we're going to go ahead and remove the bolt. Later we're going to install the bolt without the pulley so we can... Okay, nothing spun but uh, just in case we're going to install the bolt later as well. And make sure that it's a TDC. Okay. So let's, let's put the bolt one more time so we can turn the engine if we need to. Uh, that way guys, okay, we'll verify that nothing moved. Okay, better, better be safe. And next step will be, okay, when we verify that it's a TDC, we're going to remove the chain. Okay, and we're going to verify that it's all the way now. Contacting the pin, you can see the purple pin there. Perfect, that's it. Okay guys, so now, <coughs> this is uh, your timing chain. This is uh, the variable timing sprocket right here. This is just a regular sprocket. Uh, this is your tensioner down there. It has only two, two bolts, guys, in order to remove that tensioner. Okay, I'm trying to get a little bit more light, maybe like this one. And uh, we need to go ahead, okay, now remove the bolt, the, the tensioner, it has... Um, Okay, it has two bolts with 10 millimeter socket that we need to remove. It will be spring loaded, so it may shoot a little bit once you remove the second bolt. Kind of like it will be under pressure. So be careful not to smash a finger or something because it has a spring inside. Okay, removing those now. Perfect, now we are about to remove the second one. Okay, perfect guys, now we grab the tensioner, okay, and we pull the, the rear side out first. Okay, like that. And the tensioner came out. Now you can see how terribly dirty that thing, that thing is. Uh, now if you need to compress it, guys, okay, you will need to hold that tooth back. Okay, it goes only one way, but the thing about it is, okay, like that. You need to adjust it, and then you need to install something to hold the tooth here, and that's how you decompress the tensioner. Okay, now uh, this tensioner, okay, on the bottom side, you can see it comes loose like that. And you can actually uh, go ahead, okay, let me grab with this hand so you can see. You can pull it out, guys. Uh, excuse me, not tensioner, guide. Okay, timing chain guide. Now, we can go ahead, okay, and start removing the chain from the sprockets. Okay. I like that. You can see, guys, the old chain is out of the way now. So now, this is the chain for the oil pump. We're going to remove the guides here, guys. Two bolts. And, and the tensioner has... You can remove either one bolt or you can remove two. One for the spring as well. Okay, perfect. Okay, 
you can see how it goes under the bolt. Now, since we already got this bolt loose, okay, you can even go ahead and uh, get it loose by hand. Perfect. We'll grab the sprocket, pull it out, guys. Okay, and remove the little chain as well. So we just have two more bolts, guys, that we need to remove for that guy there. And uh, everything will come off. We'll be ready for the new chain after that and putting it together. Okay, perfect, coming out guys. So you can see the whole assembly came out, all the guides, timing chain tensioner, all that guys is out of the car. So this is part one guys, this is the video for removing the timing chain. Now check out on the channel guys, we'll have a video for replacing the timing chain and uh, you can check out the link in the description of the video below. Also guys, uh, the installation video will be there. Also we'll have the uh, other products, okay, all the tools, the new chain kit, everything we use listed in the description of the video below. Please check it out. So, part one guys, this assembly, it's done. Part two, putting it together now. So, please check it out guys. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and see you guys next time.